If you're a landscape photographer and your shots are just not having the impact you feel like they should, consider creating panoramic images. Oftentimes with scenery, the subjects we're shooting were meant to be displayed on something a little better than the square boxes social media sites give us. Bigger mediums for bigger images. In this tutorial, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step process on how I create large, gigapixel, panoramic images. We will start with shooting the images in the field, working with the color in Lightroom, stitching in PTGUI, composing and rendering our final images in Photoshop, injecting VR metadata with a tool called the Exifer, and finally, posting everything to our social media sites so your audience can see them in their proper field of view, displayed in a way that does justice to your beautiful images. Today I'm in the Badlands National Park taking some landscape photos, but you see, there's a problem. Trying to fit this expansive vista into a single image using a wide-angle lens just isn't doing it for me. If I zoom out to capture the entire scene, all of the beautiful detail gets lost. These interesting rock formations and colorful textures are so small in the frame, they all but disappear. I want to show how big this landscape is, but at the same time, be able to appreciate the small details in it. And the way to make that happen is with a panorama. Here's how to do it. The goal is to take a series of overlapping images and then merge them together in a big canvas during the editing process. So first, equip your telephoto lens of choice and mount everything onto a level tripod. It's best to take these photos in a vertical orientation. So loosen this tripod ring knob and rotate your camera 90 degrees. Now level it again using your camera's built-in leveler. You should be able to pan the camera as far as you want and the horizon will be level. Moving on to camera settings, everything should be in manual. Manual focus, manual iris, manual white balance, ISO, and shutter speed. Change your drive to take one picture at a time, max resolution, and raw settings. Next, turn on your live view and do a quick pan test across the scene just to make sure no cool features go out of the frame. Now, I like to use one of these shutter triggers just because I feel like it speeds things up a little bit and I don't have to worry whether or not I jiggle the camera too much when I was pushing this button. After taking the first shot, pan the camera so that some of the subject in the first shot is overlapping on the second shot. The software needs these points so it can compute which photos to line up with each other. Continue triggering the shutter until the entire scene is covered, making sure each shot has some overlapping information. So now you're finished with your shoot, you're back at the office, and have all the media backed up and organized properly. If you'd like to see a detailed tutorial on this subject, click here. I made a step-by-step -step video on efficient workflow practices, and you might find it useful. Add all of your images to Lightroom and find the raw image sequence of your panorama. Make your color adjustments to the first image, then sync the adjustments across the rest of the sequence. At this point, you have a couple options. You can right-click the sequence and attempt to build the panorama within Lightroom. However, if you have a huge sequence, Lightroom won't have enough memory to process everything and will likely freeze up. I prefer to export the sequence and use a different piece of software to do the stitching. With the sequence selected, go up to File and Export. Put the rendered photos in their own folder. JPEG is fine for the format since we already made our main color adjustments. Make sure they are full sized, not sharpened, and click Export. The best software I've found for stitching and exporting panorama images is PTGUI by far, and it's very easy to use. Load in the image sequence you just exported from Lightroom. Click Align Images. If the panorama was shot correctly, a preview box will pop up, showing you what the panorama will look like. If everything looks good to you, create the panorama. For file format, select Photoshop Large .psb and click Create Panorama. It'll export to the folder that contains the individual JPEG sequence images. Open that Photoshop file you just created. Now's the time to make some basic cropping adjustments, stamp out any trash in the shot, and make whatever kind of color adjustments you want. Once you are happy with the image, save the PSB. Then flatten the image and export as a TIFF. Now, you have a super high resolution panorama that you can send to a print shop and get framed if you wish. 
A company I use for printing and framing that does an absolutely amazing job at this is Read Art and Imaging. There's a link to their site below if you would like more information on printing your panoramas. From here, we're gonna take that file and optimize it for social media. Create a new Photoshop document. Set the width to 14,000, the height to 2,000, and the resolution to 72 in 8-bit color space. The widest aspect ratio Facebook will allow for these images is 7 to 1, and the resolution on the horizontal pixels has to be below 15,000. So, for easy math, this canvas size will do. Hit command semicolon to show the guides, and then go up to view, guides, and new guide layout. Choose seven columns in one row so that we both have a perfect 7 to 1 aspect ratio to snap to, and also have seven perfect squares at 2000 by 2000 pixels each. Now go back to the first panorama document, and while holding shift, drag the flanned image up to the new canvas we just created. Click Command T and scale the massive panorama to fit this canvas in a way that satisfies your compositional liking. We will be exporting both the wide canvas as a single image for Facebook, and also the squares as individual images for Instagram. Experiment until you're happy with the composition, then hit enter to confirm the transformation. Time to export. We'll start with the larger image. Go up to File, Export, and Export As. JPEG is good for the format, 6 is fine on the quality, and make sure your image doesn't exceed 25 megabytes. Save it in a place you can remember and give it a name. Now, to export those squares. Hit C to bring up the Crop tool. Make sure Delete Cropped Pixels up at the top is not selected. Then select the first square. The width should be 2,000 pixels. Hit Enter and export that square with a sequence number. Repeat the same process for the other squares. Drag the Crop tool so that it snaps to the guides we made, ensuring every square is exactly 2,000 by 2,000 pixels. We want Facebook to think our panorama is a 360 image, so that the viewers can click and drag with their mouse, pan around with their phone, or even view this from an Oculus headset, as if it's virtual reality. But in order for this to work, we need to inject VR metadata into the image. The best way i found to do this is with an online tool called The Exifer. Go to theexifer.net and drag the panorama image we just created in Photoshop into the site. The JPEG, not the TIFF. Once it's finished uploading, click EXIF me. Go down to the metadata area and for make, type Apple, and for model, Apple iPhone 6 Plus. Then hit Go Exifing. Click this button to download your new photo with added metadata to your downloads. Give the new photo a name, place it in the proper folder, and now it's ready for Facebook. It's finally time to show the world that beautiful panorama you've been working so hard to create. Today, I'll be uploading the Badlands panorama to the Instagram page, Earth Panoramas, as well as the associated Facebook group. It's a public group, and I encourage all of you in the panorama photography community to post your shots here. It's the one place in all of Facebook that's dedicated to showing these large panoramas in VR format. Add your shot by creating a post as usual, Navigate to the place where you saved the image with the injected metadata and select it. If you did everything correctly, you will see the 360 photo icon in the corner of the image. Add your description and tags, then post it. Moving on to Instagram. Click the Add Post button and select all the squares in the panorama sequence. They should all be in order as long as you name them sequentially. Verify they are all in their original square aspect ratio. Add your description and post it. If you'd like to be featured on our Instagram page, just send over the squares. I'll get you taken care of. So that's all there is to it. Thanks for following along and making the effort to take your panoramas to the next level. There are many processes you can take to improve your panoramas beyond what you just saw. But the steps taken in this video are a good jumping off point to creating high quality panoramas. Hopefully you can take what you've learned and expand on it. Be creative and don't limit yourself. Here are a couple extra tips when shooting panoramas. Don't use a polarizer. The sky will become very uneven in color as you pan across the sky. Even if you adjust the filter between shots, it will still look off and be hard to edit. Trust me. It's good to put some foreground elements in your shot, but if it's too close to the camera, it might look a little weird when you stitch it together. Straight lines, for example, will have a weird curve to them. Leave yourself plenty of space on the top and bottom of the frame. 
a lot of that sky will get cropped out during the stitching and editing process, and you don't want the top of a mountain, for example, to go out of frame at the end. Composition is everything, and everything needs to be composed well. Keep in mind that your one panorama needs to have good composition for up to eight images. Not only the large wider image, but each of the squares should have something interesting to offer as well. If you're having memory issues in the editing process, export the panorama to a JPEG format as you come out of PTGUI. The most processor intensive part of this whole process is working in Photoshop, and using a JPEG file instead of a PSB will make a massive difference. Follow me on Instagram for the wildlife photography side of the business, Vimeo for film releases, and don't forget to join the Facebook group and Earth Panorama's Instagram page for more amazing panorama photography. These photographers put a lot of work into their shots and deserve some appreciation.